Hello grandchildren, today I wanted to talk to you guys about saying yes and tell you guys a little story about one time that I did that was kind of awesome. By default, I don't really do anything. I mean like if I get out of school or if it's like a weekend and I wake up, I don't, I don't do anything. It's mostly just laying in bed and watching another episode of Gilmore Girls. And I know I've talked about this a lot before, but I, I like to try to qualify how good my life has been so far based on the number of stories that I've had. Because really, at the end of the day, we only have a hundred years if we're lucky, and if most of the stuff that we do during that hundred years isn't worthy of a story, I'm not sure if it was really worthy of that life. But anyway, I'm only 19, so I don't really know what I'm talking about. But the easiest way that I've discovered so far in order to actually put myself in a position where I can uh, make new stories is by saying yes to things. I mean, again, my default is just sitting at home in my room browsing the internet and stuff, and that's not... That's not story worthy. One of the things that I noticed a few years back was that almost every single day that goes by, there is at least one opportunity to do something weird or crazy or story worthy. And we kind of just ignore it because we don't realize that the potential is there. It's honestly, like half of my stories begin with somebody asking me if I wanted to hang out. And I mean, it's super easy to just say like, nah, I got a lot of stuff I'm working on or oh, no, I'm tired, uh, I needed to catch up on some sleep, maybe another time. And that immediately cancels out any opportunity for adventure that was gonna happen in that moment. You might be different, but I guess it's kind of like the little introverted part of my brain that is just like, mm, you know what, interacting with people is too complicated and stressful and I want to just lay down for a long time. And while it's really hard to go against that instinct, once you start doing it, it becomes kind of life-changing in a way. I know this sounds really cheesy and lame, uh, but it's one of those things that you don't actually realize how true it is until you actually do it. And uh, you should try it and just see how it goes. The whole reason that this works in my opinion is that uh, really good stories don't happen from planning. A lot of really good stories are about things that didn't go as expected or things that were weird that happened. And by not allowing yourself to have weird things happen to you, they won't happen to you. So if you decide that you're gonna stay in your room all day and not do anything, nothing weird is gonna happen to you because you're in your room and there's nothing weird happening in your room besides maybe a weird YouTube video that someone sends you, but that's not story worthy. The whole idea behind living an adventurous life isn't about planning adventures, it's about planning to seize adventurous opportunities. Enough with the preaching, let me just give you an example of one of, the, one of my stories about that, exactly that. One of my best friends, Logan, while we were in high school, would frequently call me like at midnight or one or two in the morning. Usually it happened when his cousin was visiting and uh, spending the night there and they wanted to do something exciting, but they weren't technically allowed to leave the house. Neither of them could really drive anywhere because both of their cars were in the driveway and turning them on would create enough noise that their parents would know that they had left. I never really knew what to expect when I got that call really, really late at night. All I knew was that I was gonna be driving both of them and that we were all gonna do something. And the first time that it happened, it was really easy to, to tell Logan that I was too tired and needed to sleep and couldn't do it. I almost did, but I didn't. This one time, we wanted to go check out the subway caves. It's a really cool cave system, and we ha always had a lot of fun trying to go through these caves without any flashlights, because it's just pitch black. This is the middle of winter, and after we checked out the caves, we decided to check out Lassen National Park, which has these beautiful lakes right in the front once you go through the entrance. You usually have to pay to get in, but it was the middle of the night and there wasn't a guy in the toll booth thing, so we just kind of drove through and wanted to check out what it was like in that park in the middle of the night. It was super cold. There's snow all over the place. We parked my car and walked down to one of the lakes. Now, the thing that I'm about to tell you next is really, really, really dumb. And I'm not saying that you should go do this because it's very dangerous and probably wasn't a good idea to do it, but we did it and it was awesome. So I'd, I, I might be sending you mixed messages, but the point is don't do this. Somebody mentioned the idea of walking on this frozen lake, and it's huge. It, it, it's not just like a tiny pond, it's this huge lake, and it was completely frozen all the way across. It just seemed way too dangerous. Like, if, if the ice cracked and you fell through, you could, you'd probably die. You'd get trapped underneath the ice. Um, we didn't have any ropes or anything, really, to help somebody get out. 
It, it, it would have been awful. I don't know why this was a good indication of whether or not the ice was steady, but we were throw we started throwing rocks out onto the ice to see what would happen. So slowly getting larger sizes of rocks, starting out with a couple pebbles and then bigger rocks until we were throwing giant boulders out onto the ice. And every single time we'd throw it, we'd think that it was gonna break, but instead there would just be this loud crack that echoed across the lake. And then these boulders would just slide across the ice. So logically, if we could throw a 40 pound rock onto the ice, a 150 pound person would be no problem, right? None of this is me trying to say that we were smart kids. I think this mostly has to do with luck and the time of the year that we did it, but it was just super cold and Logan's cousin stepped out on the ice slowly, right on the edge. He stepped out and it was just terrifying. We were just waiting for it to crack, but it never did. It was, it was it was really, really terrifying, but it was really, really freaking cool also that he was just walking across this lake. And he jumped. Nothing happened. He started running around. Nothing happened. So Logan went out. Totally fine. And I followed. And uh, then all three of us were on this lake running around and screaming. And you could do this thing where you would go running really fast and then just stop, plant your feet. Because it's ice, you just slide across really, really far, just ice skating with your shoes. Every time you jumped, when you landed, a giant thud would just reverberate through the ice all the way across the lake. And it, would, it was one of the weirdest sounds I've ever heard in my life. It, it was close to a full moon that night, and this part might sound really dumb, but when you're in that situation where there's three stupid teenage guys running across this frozen lake, the, the only reasonable thing to do when you see a full moon is to start howling. So we were running and sliding and jumping and laughing and howling at the moon, the three of us. And it was a v just extremely surreal moment in time that I will never forget. And I think that tends to happen a lot on adventures like that. The good ones have this magic moment where you've somehow discovered this thing that you didn't know existed. Not, not a thing, like a feeling. And you never knew that this was a thing that you could feel. And now you get to feel it. And when you're in that moment, every single moment that you spent laying in your bed and watching TV and browsing Facebook for the 20th time, all of those moments just seem stupid and useless. And why did I even spend time on those? And it, it, it really changes the way that you, you look at how you live and how you spend time and how other people spend time. When you're out there on the ice running around and la laughing and howling at the moon, it's really easy to, to just get lost in thinking about what's everybody else doing right now? Are they sleeping? Are they playing video games? And it's kind of freaky thinking about how much people forget about doing something crazy every once in a while. And I'm not saying that you have to do this all the time. Um, I still lay in my bed some days. I still browse Facebook 30 times in a row. I still watch Gilmore Girls. But doing it occasionally and remembering to, to try to do things like that occasionally uh, and saying yes to things that maybe you don't want to do, um, as long as it's not going to put anybody else in, in harm's way and it doesn't go against any of your core values as a person say yes go on that adventure and i think if you do that enough times it'll change who you are as a person and you'll get some really freaking awesome stories that you're gonna want to tell everybody that's it for today grandchildren um if you see me anytime in the near future we should go find snow somewhere if we live near it. If not, we should do a rain check, but um, we should go sledding because sledding is freaking awesome. And I, I think you deserve to see your grandfather go sledding down a hill and just flip over and face plant in the snow. And then you think I'm dead for a second, but then you run over and I jump out and scare you or something because that seems like something a grandfather would do. Or I actually died and that's really sad. I hope that doesn't happen. Anyway, that, we go sledding. That's what I'm talking about. Um, yeah. Anyway, grandchildren, I will talk to you in the next entry. See you guys.